Hey guys, today we have something different for you. We're going to go back to our roots. Before Illy and I were ever making anime and video game weapons on camera, we were making historically inspired builds for reenactors all around the world. And you guys have asked us to make historical based weapons for quite some time. But before we get into exactly what it is that we're making, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, and that's NordVPN. With the world all really focused on a different kind of virus, it's important that we take time and remember our own personal cybersecurity. Just like a knight wears armor to protect himself from weaponry, you need to protect yourself from vulnerability of cyber attacks. Not only does NordVPN have some of the fastest servers in over 60 countries, it also protects your information while you're on the move. Whether you're traveling or you're stuck in an airport, NordVPN will keep you safe. NordVPN can protect up to six simultaneous connections. And I know a lot of you are stuck at home together watching YouTube or other streaming services. NordVPN will keep your data safe while you stream. Get 70% off of NordVPN at $3.49 a month, plus you get an additional month for free by heading over to nordvpn.com slash that works or use the promo code that works. So what are you waiting for? There's no risk here. You can cancel the subscription at any time. There's no long-term contracts. Keep yours and your loved one's information safe by downloading NordVPN today. So you said a historical build? What sort of historical build is it? Today, we're gonna make a Warhammer. A Warhammer! <laughs> Aren't Warhammers huge? Well, in fantasy novels and stuff, they're very big. Uh, usually carried by a dwarf or something like that, but historically, actually, Warhammers are pretty small and dainty. Hmm, interesting. Most of the time, the smaller Warhammers do a lot more damage than you would think a larger, almost like sledgehammer would do. So why are smaller Warhammers more effective than larger hammers? Well, think about it the following way. A knife or a sword or just about any other melee weapon has a very thin edge. The energy gets transferred to that, and that's what makes it very effective. It's the same thing with a Warhammer. Not only that, a lighter weapon, you can generate more movement, more speed, does a lot more damage. How long are the handles? Uh, now, they range everything from very short to mounted on like an eight foot pole. Wow. Uh, and everywhere in between, uh, sometimes they're mounted on wood handles, sometimes they're all steel halves. I think in this case, Blacksmith Shop will do a steel hafted one, probably about that big. Some photos I've seen of Warhammers are super stylized and over the top decorated. Are we going to do ours that way? Well, Warhammers come in just about every shape and size and levels of detail. There are very, very plain ones that just have flat faces. There are some that have egg-shaped heads, some that are hollow, some that have a ton of elaborate engraving. Now remember, these are actually knightly weapons. So depending on the status level that you were as a knight, lord, king, however it be, you would have different levels of detail. Some are very plain, some have months and months of work on them. I say we go somewhere in the middle, we'll do some cool forging, we'll do a little bit of white work, which is the grinding, the filing, the shape, but in general, let's just make something that looks great and works great too. Let's do it.
So at this point in the project, me and Ilya are gonna actually use a hot cut in the anvil and a hot cut top tool. And I'm actually gonna strike the top to create a separation in the material. And this will give us that mace-like head appearance. So what are the benefits to a warhammer over, say, a sword? Well, there's no coincidence that every culture, basically in Europe, had something like a warhammer, a mace, something like that. Now, we think of when you take out an enemy, you're cutting them, you're making them bleed, but think about going up against an armored combatant. Sometimes you just need that bludgeoning face just to bind up the armor so they can't move anymore and you can finish them another way. And then that spike, I mean, that's kind of self-explanatory. Those spikes are long and tapered. That energy gets transferred to that tiny point, and it can pierce even heat-treated, well-made armor. So what was the country of origin? Where did they originate at? Well, like I said, almost every culture in Europe had a warhammer. And if you're a knight or anybody fighting in armor, especially fighting against somebody in armor, your best option is probably to grab a warhammer. So you guys are into weapons and you make a lot of weapons. You know, I'm into architectural and sculptural work. What makes a Warhammer cool? Why is it sought after? What What is the elements of design that I would think were cool? Well, actually, this is the perfect project for somebody with your interests. Uh, the forging that goes into these Warhammers, especially the shafts of them, are found a lot of times in architectural gates, cathedrals, stuff like that. The terminations or the bolsters or the rondelles can have many different shapes. The handles are often spiraled just like you'd see in a cathedral column. Uh, there's a lot of different design elements that go into it that aren't necessarily sword makery. They're a lot more architectural or sculptural like.
This is where we kind of depart from architectural work and move into the sculptural work, and that is creating the actual haft of the Warhammer. Ilya's decided to do a branch motif, so he's going to section off material that will later get twisted and turned into the ragged staff type look. So why the tree branch motif? I thought we were going a historical route. This looks a lot more fantasy. As I mentioned before, Warhammers incorporate a lot of architectural work that is found in cathedrals. If you look at the very first French Gothic cathedral, you see the prominence of the tree branch motif, which represents the lineage of Abraham. And if any knights would carry that symbol, it directly links them back to a very noble and ancient bloodline. In the Renaissance, another meaning was actually added, which represents the feats of Hercules. So this is the part that I really like. This is where Ilya and Matt are creating a rope-like texture for the handle of the haft. So they're gonna hot cut the centers of the flats and then they'll reheat the material and twist it, giving it that rope-like appearance for the handle. last pieces to make are something Ilya decided to add, which are two flower-like pedal washers that go on either side capturing the hammer once it's mounted. So, do Warhammers have homones? With the bulk of the grind work now complete, it's time to heat treat our hammer head. This material is 1045, so the only real way to get this material properly hard is to heat it up to temperature and quench it in the water.
Now that the hammer has been heat treated and had a quick little temper, it's time to move on to doing the final grind work. Not only am I refining the lines that Ilya has established during the forging, but I'm also going to add in some final detail work before we permanently assemble the entire piece. Now that the head is heat treated, we're actually going to move on to tempering and while it's tempering, the head gets warm and hot again. As we all know, the material expands when it's hot, so then we can force it onto the shaft and as it cools, it'll have a perfectly tight fit. Warhammers were prevalent weapons on the battlefield through the 14th 15th century and used throughout many different cultures. I think we did a great job creating our own original design that falls within the parameters history has dictated.
All right, this hammer, it turned out awesome. That thing did some serious damage. I couldn't believe for the size of this thing how awesome it really did do. Yeah, it's very not only very cool looking, but it works very well too. And you guys have the unique opportunity. You ask us all the time if you can purchase the weapons we made on this show. We're putting it up for auction. The link to the auction will be in the description and the first comment below. Click on that, check it out, see if you want it. And don't forget as always to tell us in the comments below what historical build you want to see this team. Make.